to talk about. Yeah. That is if you want to talk about. Right. Spirit guides. Specifically, not specifically, <laughs> specifically, <laughs> what are they? Hmm. Who are they? Yeah. What do they do? And how can we communicate with them? Because oh inquiring minds want to know. Lord Jesus, that's a big question. I gave a whole class on spirit guides, but to break it down for our spirit poppers. So spirit guides are not a being. Spirit guide is a role filled by many beings. Playing a role, not playing a role, but occupying a role to help you in your life do the things that you as a soul came here to do. Because before you were ever born into this world, you had a blueprint. Like you had things that you wanted to do. Brian, you wanted to be born in Pennsylvania for some reason. You wanted to end up in, you know, Florida for now. You wanted to meet the people that you were going to meet that were important to you. Gain the knowledge, have the lessons. Like this is a soul is what you wanted to do. And you have a team in spirit that is there to facilitate that for you. Now, you can have temporary guides. Like say you're writing a book and you because you're writing a book, you call in a guide who can help you, res you know, resource what you need to know in terms of knowledge or help you with your skill level and all that stuff. You can attract guides that are there. And once you've written your book, they cycle on out. They move on to the next yeah. person. And then you can have, you have permanent guides as well. Everybody has what we kind of popularly call a guardian angel, which usually aren't angels, but can be an angel. Everybody is born with at least one being that attends to them and walks with them through this entire experience. And they're like a soul friend. And these are typically ancestors, soul group people, and higher dimensional beings. And again, sometimes can be angels. Um, but the spirit guides that I personally have connected with have always been like ancestors. Like my mom is one of my guides since she passed in 2012. And she told me too, before she died, she's like, Whatever I can do to get back to you so we can continue to do what we love to do in the world of this, of paranormal, I'm going to do. And she's done some things. She's not as evidential as I'd like her to be, but she actually helps facilitate some of my work as a guide. But then I have elemental guides, which are like, you know, tree spirits. And I've encountered interdimensional beings, specifically Arcturians. That's a whole Oprah that we don't have to watch that episode right now. But there are all <laughs> kinds of guides. So without me hogging all of this, because I do teach on this subject, why don't you tell me what you think about spirit guides and do you, have you ever met any of your spirit guides? Who are they? No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so when I was younger, I was always of the opinion that a spirit guide was, and this is before I got you know any type of knowledge and this sort of thing, but I always felt like it was someone that always felt close. They felt like a friend. So you're, you're talking about what, you know, soul friend that resonates with me a lot because I feel like you have to have a friendship because it's a partnership. Essentially it's, you know, a spirit level partnership, but it, it really is a partnership. I, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that I have met a guide or two, mm -hmm. but I'm not super conscious of it. It's been, during meditation, I have gone up, I say, and and sort of communed, but it, it's sort of a more of a, I didn't see them, I more or less felt them. Mm -hmm. I felt that familial ener familiar energy. And, and when I've come out of that meditation, I had a little bit more knowledge. And it was more like I was meditating on something specific, something that was going on in my life, something that I just needed more information and answer to maybe help pinpointing a direction. Um, but I never felt like they would ever tell you, Brian, you need to do this. I felt like it was, you've asked this sort of open-ended question, what direction should I go? I'll give you some information to sort of, sort of sway you in a general direction, but you have to take the step. You have to make it, you know, you have to make it happen, but I, I can help guide you there, guide. So that's what I kind of felt. Um, I do have a connection to a tree spirit of a big tree. It's a um, an acorn tree. It's a huge acorn tree that's not on my property, but it's behind my fence in the back. And, and I, when I just touch that tree, the energy is just amazing. And we've sort of had conversation 
And, and by that, I mean, I talk and I, I don't hear anything back, but I feel it back. And it's interesting because that tree is very old, um, probably, I'm not super, super old, but definitely probably older than I am. And, and it has a very rich, if I were to sort of visualize, it would be sort of a, a grandfather but sort of a, a grandfather you would sit on his lap and he would give you a Werther's candy. Like, like it is a very loving, oh, I love it, that. Th 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 there's a laugh about that tree. There is a laugh. It is a hearty laugh. I love and that. And it just, and so whenever I go outside, I always go over to that tree and, and, and give it, give him some love. Well, you know, there is this idea that I learned it from this lady in Utah when I visited once that every property piece of property has a grandfather tree like an anchoring tree and tree spirit that nourishes the system of all the trees in that space and spot like because you know trees talk to each other through the root system yeah. and like you know this tree knows what that tree needs and sends it the nourishment and things of that nature so it's like such a beautiful thing but there's always that one that one energy that's anchoring and gritting the entire ecosystem of that place and so that's really cool that you were able to kind of intuitively get a sense for that. And I had um, the property that I was living at before, it was a five acre property and there were over a thousand oak trees, but I was able to find the one tree on my property that was gritting. And I would take frequently, just take little gifts out there, like, you know, pieces of, um, sometimes I would put like little crystals, colored crystals. Um, and I would also take little pieces of like pound cake that I'd make things that would be absorbed into the earth, biodegradable, the squirrels could eat it, the ecosystem would be benefited because of it. Like I wouldn't put out any plastic thing, for example, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Put out natural things, but I'd always offer like little gifts to the property, like thank you property for taking care of me. Thank you for protecting me. You know, while Jeremy's traveling, you're, I'm here safe and all of my trees have got my back. So anyway, not to that go out on awesome. a tangent. I wanted that to- That is beautiful. It is. I want to tell you a story though, about this guide that I met once. It was the weirdest experience. It was the middle of the night. And you know how you kind of start to come up from the depths of your subconscious and you start to wake up. You're not completely awake yet, though. You're just still, you're about, you're about maybe it's like one a quarter. Twilight feeling. <laughs> it's a you're twilight. Kind of, yeah. Right. You, you can, you can sense things, but you're still deep and cozy in the sleep of it all. Anyway, so as I'm kind of coming up, from the, the depths of my sleep, I begin to hear something. And it's a conversation that's taking place on the side of my bed between a man and a woman. And they're, they're talking about something. And I, I can just barely make it out, but it's like a rousing conversation. Like they're really having a talk. But as I'm coming up and I'm starting, you know, I'm starting to get alerted to the conversation. So I'm starting to wake up more. I hear her say, oh, I'm waking up. And I hear him say, Okay, we've, we, well, let's stop this now. And I recognize that that was my voice. I heard myself talking and I, I was talking to a man. And so as I'm coming up, I say, wait a minute, who are you to the man? And the way, it, because I was starting to wake up, I was saying it so slowly in the hypnagogic state, like, who are you? Tell me. Like, And he said, Joseph, my name is Joseph. And then I, I woke up. But what I was actually doing was hearing myself in my light body in the astral or another dimension, having a conversation with a spirit guide who, and I could hear it right beside me, but I, I could hear myself talking to this guide. And it's interesting to me that his name was Joseph because I have always been just aligned with St. Joseph, like Joseph, the father of Jesus, right? Because what a stand up guy when you think about it. Like if the story of the Bible is true and Mary gets knocked up by God and he's with Mary and now like the shame involved with having a pregnant young woman that isn't married. And nonetheless, he travels with her. She gives birth to Jesus. He takes Jesus under his wing, raises him as his old own child, teaches him his craft. Like Joseph is like the epitome, the epitome of a good man to me. And I've always just dug Joseph. So the fact that my guide was named Joseph was interesting. And I always wondered, well, is that a name that he gave because of my alignment with Joseph? Or am I aligned with Joseph the saint because I've got a guide named Joseph? I don't know. Kind of cool, right? Yeah. Weird and Maybe cosmic. Maybe it's both. Maybe yeah. it's both. Yeah. Obviously meant to be. Yeah. Really that interesting. Is fascinating. Fascinating. I love stuff like this. I just, I talk about this all day. Super, super weird though. Mind bending to hear yourself noticing yourself 
Like yeah. my astral self was like, oh, here comes Crystal. <laughs> but here like comes what, Crystal's body and awareness. But what a level and layer of, of mm-hmm. higher consciousness you were in and and just a tribute to where you are were at that time in your spiritual journey mm-hmm. that you were able to be self-aware of that conversation that was happening with your astral body and your physical body. You were in that in-between phase mm-hmm. and you could, that is just, that is that And is it was amazing. so funny because I, I got the inherent sense that I didn't want them to know I was listening. I didn't want them, but of course (laughs) it's me. (laughs) So like, and that's the thing about dimensionality. We think, oh, the fifth dimension is over there. Well, no, we're in all dimensions all the time. It's just becoming conscious to it. And so in that moment I was becoming conscious to it, but I was still so locked in to my 3D body that I like, yeah, I mean, the gig was up. They're like, yeah, we got to go. Here she comes. Here yeah, comes go. Here, crystal. Here comes that crystal, that conscious <laughs> Waking crystal. Waking up to 3D <laughs> reality. But I mean, spirit <laughs> guides are really interesting. You asked in the beginning, like, how do you make contact with them? Well, first, to understand that they're with you, whether you sense them or not is important. Like, they're with, they're with you. They're with me right now in this moment. But if you do want to reach out to them, You know, the the world of spirit is so interesting because it responds to our inquiry. It responds to our intention. And so that's why when Jesus said, ask, and it is given. If you don't ask, though, it's not going to be given. You know, you have to have an intention and put it out there and let them know that you want it. So the first thing to do is say, hey, spirit guides, friends in spirit, I want to know that you're here. I want to know who you are. Give me a sign and I will be observant. And that's the other thing, Brian, is that people ask for signs all the time and then they go right back to Real Housewives of Atlanta and they don't pay any attention. And here Spirit is doing jazz hands on the periphery of the life. (laughs) And they're just like watching, you know, NeNe Leakes on Real Housewives of Atlanta because we don't pay attention. And so we miss almost all of the evidences. So if you ask for a sign, for God's sakes, pay attention. And they give signs in different ways. Do you have to ask it verbally Mm -hmm. out loud or Mm -hmm. can you do it with your mind? They can hear your mind talk. They can hear it telepathically. However, I like to add a layer of sound on top of that because that is energy. And that also is the essence of my soul in this life. Like sound is who I am. So I do like to speak it out if I can. I feel like it adds wings to the intention. It gets there faster or something. But if you can't, because you're lying in bed next to your big husband like I do. Like, I can't just be praying out loud or doing light language and acting all crazy now. You can say it in your mind and they still hear you. So, huh. yeah. Fascinating. Yes, well, but... a little tutorial. That's fantastic. I, I just let me add, though, that there are many ways that the guides will let you know that they're there. And some of them are quite subtle because just as you so perceptively offered, they guide. They never say, do this now. Unless you're going to... Unless you're about to go off the rails and die or something then the angel will come in and like okay here's the like we got to get you out of here that happens but for the most part they always honor your free will and when they respond they'll give you little signs sometimes you might feel a little tap on your shoulder or something you feel like a sensation in your field sometimes you'll actually hear something your name being called or maybe you can kind of perceive that conversation like I did other times, um, they will speak to you in song lyrics. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Like, yes. you know, hey, let me know who you are. And then you get, hey, Joey, I'm yeah. not angry. Well, how come I hear Joey, oh, you know, four times in the next one week from Concrete Blonde? Well, maybe your guide is Joey or Joseph. So pay attention to song lyrics. They send messages that way. Pay attention to your dreams. If y'all are out there not having a dream journal, I don't know why we're... Why, what, what, what is going on with you? You Hello. have to have a dream journal and you need to write in it as soon as you wake up or right. you will forget. Absolutely. No matter what it is, even if all you remember is a feeling or a color and that's it, write it down because keeping that journal uh, causes you to have more dreams. And yeah. so work with your dreams, patterns, synchronicities. You know, an angel loves a pattern. Oh, a yeah. pattern of three. If you're, if you're becoming aware of something repeating in your environment three times, it's often guides or synchronicities, um, seeing 11-11. I see that all the time. All the time. I will be doing a billion other things. And you know, at work, I'm like all over the place. Yes. And I will sit and for whatever reason, I'll just do like that. Mm-hmm. There's Because my, my phone sits to the side and I will, it'd be 11-11. Yep. I know. And I think some people are like, oh, the angels are giving you a message. Maybe. 
But I often think that's just a activation or an attunement. Like I agree. Yeah, it's an I agree because I, if you partner with it, you can kind of feel it yeah. as it's being downloaded. I mean, do I believe that eleven eleven energy is a little heightened because numerically the vibration? Sure, mm-hmm. but I, I absolutely believe that is an activation. I've always felt that, and some of my friends are like that. No, no that's not yes. I it believe is. it is. I believe it yes. is. Also, things moving on this corner of your eyes. That's often how spirit starts to just kind of make themselves known to you. And also flashes of light that you see with your eyes closed or open can be guided. I see that a lot. Do you know I see when I close my eyes? What? I'm going to do that again. Watch. Closed. Open. Open. (laughs) So when I close my eyes, I see gold or purple. And it's swirly yeah. energy. I always see that. It's always gold or purple. You know what? I mean, purple is my favorite color, but. I have to tell you, what t- are we? Purple. Look, I said purple and purple showed up. Just oh, saying. beautiful. Yeah. In your background. Okay. We have some time. So when I was a kid, I was a spiritual kid. My dad was, this, I told you he's an animist. He believed in spirit. Like he believed in all of that. So did my mom. She was completely psychic. Anyway, I remember being like in middle school, second grade, third grade. And we'd have to put our heads down on the desk or like we're taking a little time out or a nap. And as I put my head down and my eyes were closed, I would always see like patterns of light. And these would just swirl around and morph. And then in the light, I would see, and in the darkness, the void, I would see patterns and like grid lines. And I remember thinking as a child, oh, this is God. I remember thinking very clearly, oh, this is, this is God. This is where God is. And I would just hang out with my head on the desk or at home, just watching the lights and watching the patterns. Because if you can do that and stay kind of passive and not get too activated by what you're seeing, you can start traveling through wormholes. <laughs> you can start traveling and having different transdimensional experiences. I really believe that's the portal dimension to all these other experiences. Did you see that too? I, if I mean, I, unfortunately, I, so I'm in a cul-de-sac, but where my bedroom is, I have a slider. And then that's my, my yard. On the other side over there is, is a neighbor that's like on the, like the cul-de-sac, then there's the road that kind of travels into it. There's a house over there. They've got a spotlight on the top of their house where it Oh meets. man, these people. It comes on and it shines in. So I, I'm not always in complete darkness, but when I'm in complete darkness, I see a lot of, of mm-hmm. stuff going on. And sometimes I'll sit and stare at it. And I do when I close my eyes when I see it. But the problem is, you know, when your eyes are closed, you still blink sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like you're... It, it changes it. And I try to not sort of blink and I try to stay right. with it. And and I feel like, yeah. the only way to describe it is it feels like I get a tickle in my solar plexus mm-hmm. when my eyes close and I see that. And it sort of, I feel almost like I'm being pulled forward, which I believe is probably some type of astral mm-hmm. or soul. Mm-hmm. But when I do the blink and it changes, I'm back. Yeah. So I can only go as far until right. my eye blinks. And I'm like, damn you. Yeah. Because I blink a lot. Yeah. So I, when my eyes are closed, that happens when I like have to reset. Cause I'm like, when I'm seeing things, I can feel my eyes start to tense up. Like I'm getting excited. My eyes are tensed up. So my eyes are closed. And so then I purposefully, very neutrally just relax. So I don't break the trance, but even in just relaxing and resetting, oh, it goes and I've got to enter in again. And by the time I'm all the way back in, I'm I'm tensing up because it's so cool in there. Yes. It's just that is me one hundred percent. Super awesome. And I mean there's a lot that you can see when your eyes are closed in the dark. There's that's why they say go inward because that's the world of spirit. It's right inside of you. You don't have to be like, you know, out here looking for it in the world it's inside of you absolutely to include spirit guides you know spirit guides aren't outside of you either they're in your field they're with you right now the angels are with you right now it's about you just becoming conscious to their presence and so it is and so it is 